In this short video, we're going to take a look at um, a couple of different uh, a couple of different things related to buffers, and that is what is buffer range and buffer capacity. So um, this is going to give us a little bit of a, of a quantitative picture of buffer capacity and buffer range. So remember, we said the pH range that can be practically achieved by a buffer depends on the ratio of the acid and the conjugate base. So let's take a look at this uh, and let's do some some quick off the cuff calculations. So um, we're using the acetic acid buffer just because we, we know what the, the pKa is. Um, we, we've been doing that for the last couple of videos. So let's take a look at this first part. It says calculate the pH of a solution containing either a one to nine or a nine to one ratio of acetic acid to acetate. So let's set that up. So uh, we'll do the first one. pH is equal to 4.77 plus the log of 1 over 9. And then we'll do pH is equal to 4.77 plus the log of 9 over 1. And so basically what we're doing is we're saying, you know, what would happen, what would be the pH range if you were to have 9 times more uh, conjugate acid? If you were to have 90%, uh, I'm sorry, if you were to have 90% conjugate base, uh, and 10% conjug and 10 conjugate acid, or vice versa, 90% uh, conjugate base, 90% uh, conjugate acid, and 10% conjugate base. And so if you calculate these two pHs, you get 5.72 to 3.81. And so even with this ninefold, with this ninefold difference, um, relative to the fundamental of 4.77, you know, we stay within a relatively close range of this. Um, so we're within about one pH unit plus or minus um, of that buffer. So, you know, when you think about a buffer range uh, and, you know, 90-10 is pretty much, that's getting to be where you're getting kind of outside the limits of what a buffer can do. So, you know, the reason why we're doing this one to nine and nine to one is because, you know, we're, we're basically going as far as saying we have 90% to 10%. That's getting to kind of an extreme um, for, for a buffer. So in this case, you know, you could see within this, this sort of practical range, um, we go, we stray about one pH unit. So these things really do operate pretty close to pKa. The buffer range it ranges around that pKa by about one pH unit plus or minus. So if you needed to go somewhere else um, and use, and for example, let's say that you needed a, a, a pH equal to six in this case, you would probably not want to use acetic acid. You would want to find a buffer that had a pKa that was a little bit higher and use that as your buffer and not acetic acid. Because really acetic acid is only going to work but around 4.77 or plus or minus one pH unit. Okay, and so uh, now let's look at the next part of this. Within this range, where do you expect the, buffer, the maximum buffer capacity to be? And explain your answer. Remember, a, must, a buffer must be able to resist pH change from adding either acid or base. So remember, when we add, let's say that we add a, an acid, and we saw this the last time. So when we add an acid, uh, and we, this is our solution. So our solution contains H2O, HA, and A-. minus. Right, so when you have a buffer, these are the three things that are in that solution. So when we add an acid, that's going to react with our A minus because that's the strongest base that's around. A minus is stronger than water. Um, it's still a weak base, but it's stronger than water. So when we add a, when we add a strong acid like HCl, that's going to react with A minus to give us some HA and some Cl minus. If we were to add a strong base like NaOH that's going to react with the strongest acid we have around, which is HA. And so this is going to give us A minus plus NA plus. So that's what makes a buffer kind of special is that whether we add a strong acid or a strong base, the buffer can deal with it and, and, and can balance it out and keep the pH in kind of a controlled range around that, that pKa. So now the question is, is, well, where are we going to have sort of maximum buffer capacity between 1 to 9 and 9 to 1? And so the answer to this is going to be, where do we have the most A minus and the most HA? And really what that is, is going to be when the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of A minus, right? In this condition, we are closest to the pKa, so we're right at the pKa, and that's going to be the, the maximum amount of HA and A minus that we can have um, together at the same time with it being a buffer. So the, 
the answer to this question is, is our best, our, our maximum buffer capacity is when HA is equal to A minus. Um, and of course, the, the larger the concentration for HA and A minus is, the more buffer capacity you're going to have. But the reason why we select it at this location is so that we can have it, we have enough HA and A minus to react with either an acid or a base.